So I was taking a walk the other day and I was thinking about this channel, where it's been, where it's at, 54.2 thousand subs, salute to all y'all. Uh, and where it's going to be in the future and some of the things that I'm working on change and there's going to be a whole nother video. So be around for that. But I always wanted like a situation where I could just sit down and filibuster, sit down and just talk, run my soliloquy till I'm tired of running it. You know what I mean? I always wanted that. Um, but what I've ended up doing is analyzing and breaking down film, fussing with people, debating. And I love that cause I show up to work and do it all the time. But I still want an avenue where I can just sit down with a bottle of water, microphone in my camera, and just talk about some things uh, that just been on my mind. I felt like saying things today, but I wanted to say it without debating with folk. I wanted to say it without picking up a phone call and somebody disagreeing with me. I just kind of wanted to get my thoughts out. So at this point, that's what I'm about to do. I'm just kind of going to talk about Cowboys, the additions they have in this offseason, how they stack up to the guys that we lost, and if I think we're going to be better or not. So let's do it. So I've had this one thought about Cowboy fans and fussing with them, screaming, uh, and I sincerely think that there's a portion, a segment of cowboy fans that rather bad players than good ones. You know, if you look at the off season, whatever, every, you know, there was a lot of people that wasn't on the boat of paying Byron Jones and that's cool. But this trend that I see amongst a lot of cowboy fans and not everybody, it's just that we're such a huge fan base that 5% of cowboy fans are like a hundred thousand people. That's a lot. That's plenty. And that's, that's enough to piss me off. But you know, I think there's a portion of people that believe in upside more than current side. What's uh, what, what's the word for where how somebody is good right now? Somebody in the chat box, give me that word or whatever. I'm an idiot. But what I mean by that is they would rather not pay Byron Jones because of the dollar amount, but they believe in what Rico gathers could be. I'm more so on the notion of can we have both? I like upside. I love upside to death, but you know, we're in this business to find good football players. Don't 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 tell me we got good ones and you don't want to just hold on to them. You want to get rid of them to save some money. Because we ain't in GM mode right now. We're in uh win a damn Super Bowl mode, right? So I can take all the help I can get. And if I can get Quinn, Alder Smith, and Randy Gregory, shit, you know what I'm saying? Just 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 do that. Do that. Opposed to you know, picking this or the other. Oh, I can win a Super Bowl with Andy Dalton. I don't, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. And if you can win a Super Bowl with Andy Dalton, you can win a Super Bowl by 10 points with, with Dak Prescott. This ain't like building up a meter. It's either a can or can't thing. I think Dak can. I don't think Andy Dalton can. I ain't really want to fuss at Cowboy fans too long, but it's the kind of show I want to do. I just want to filibuster about the stuff I want to filibuster about. Y'all bear with me. So said all that to say, Byron Jones, right? We lose Byron Jones in the off season. Um, do we get better by losing Byron Jones? Absolutely not. We don't get better by losing Byron Jones. I would rather him be on the team. I was, I was in that camp of let's pay, you know, let's pay Byron over Zeke. That was my mindset or whatever, but we ended up keeping Zeke so fine. I like Zeke, but now Byron's gone. So we got to deal with cornerback. Are we worse at cornerback? We're worse in terms of talent or proven talent at cornerback, but I do think it evens out with the subtraction of Chris Richard. I think by getting rid of him, and, and trust me, look, I don't want to hear about this brand new hate for Chris Richard. This brand new out of nowhere, I don't like Chris Richard no more. Because y'all wanted a coach that can holler. Y'all wanted a coach that can scream. You wanted this coach to be your head coach. That's what you wanted. You wanted this. The bandwagon's full. Get out! I'm, I, I'm, I'm not putting somebody out the hate Chris Richard car so you can get in the car. Deal with your decisions now. But with the subtraction of Chris Richard, just in my mind, I think the defensive back group as a whole gets better. You see what I mean? So if we looking just at corner, yeah, we lose Byron, but if we can get Cheeto, AB, and Jordan Lewis to play better, then I think we'll be fine. Plus, we upgrade talent in terms of you know, once upon a time, our fourth cornerback was what, like Donovan Alumba or something? 
so now our fourth cornerback is Trevon Diggs. So now he can work his way into the situation. And, you know, I think they could really have a legit fight for that spot or whatever. You know, whether he ends up playing slot or, you know, um, uh, competing for the outside or whatever, wherever you want to put him, I do think we get better in the bottom half of cornerback. You know what I'm saying? To where we were like Chris Westry, Donovan Alumba, CJ Goodwin, those guys are now Trevon Diggs, Reg Robinson, insert whoever the hell you want the next guy to be. Kennedy, Worley, you know, whoever you want that guy. But I think we get better as a unit. The cornerback unit has gotten better. But the tippy tippy top of cornerback has not got better. Has not gotten better. But I think coaching is gonna, you know, fix a lot of those issues that we have. So can we line up with three corners in play? I think with new coaching, we'll be able to line up with three corners in play. Anyway, uh, so we lose Jeff Heath, the GOAT Jeff Heath. And I know a lot of y'all did choreograph hump dances in y'all living room. I wasn't one of those people, man. I think Jeff Heath was, uh, was a really good player for us. And even if he don't start for us, um, he can do a lot of things on this team. So I wasn't really thrilled about losing him. But, I mean, Heath is not a guy that you pay. So to be fair, that's just that. But then we um, acquire uh, hilarious Clint Dix for one year, $4 million. So for one thing, I don't even think it's guaranteed that he make the team. I just think that he's a cool little spot um, in our little, you know, competition pool or whatever. You know, he was the guy that we acquired. So is he better than Jeff Heath? I don't know. He might be a worse tackler than Heath. A lot of y'all hating on Heath because he's tackling. Y'all go watch my hysterical Clinton Dix video. He's a terrible tackler too. I think he's a little worse than Heath. So that's just my my own thoughts and opinions on that. But you know, I think last year's class is gonna do plenty work this year a lot of people thought that last year's class was worthless because they didn't play last year well that's fine you know you don't always draft for now you draft for the future and i think donovan wilson is going to be a fantastic player that's going to contribute for you more this year than he did last year so um i'm looking for him to make a you know to make a big jump but i think the good thing about donovan wilson is that he can play both spots free and strong i think I think laugh out loud, Clint Dix is only going to play free safety. Xavier Woods can play both. So I think it's going to really be a true battle of who's going to play what spot the best. You know what I'm saying? So if Hilarious is the best free safety, then Donovan and Xavier Woods will be battling for the strong safety spot. And may the best man win. You know, we don't have ties to Xavier Woods. We didn't spend big draft capital. We drafted Xavier Woods around the same time we drafted Donovan Wilson. So um, let those guys come in and fight properly and uh, have a good debate for who's going to be the best. And then if Donovan uh, Donovan Woods can come in and be a better free, then roll on the floor, laugh my ass off, Clint Dix, then you just let that dude play free safety and move on with your life. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, so whatever combinations of safeties we end up rolling with, I'm good with it. We're not going to go draft the safeties. I, I think I think Cowboys are good with having replacement level complementary guys as safeties as long as the rest of their defense is intact. So we, we, we really had a lot of change at the D tackle position, whether it be our three techs and one techs. You know, Chris, uh, Christian Covington? Chris Covington? The Covington that we got from the Texans or whatever, uh, him being gone, Malik being gone, you know, Kerry Hyder was a guy that got in some three tech reps for you. So uh, Tyrone Crawford being hurt. So yeah, we lose a lot at three tech, but I think we also gain a lot. I think we get another year of Tristan Hill that people really get on my nerves with Tristan Hill slander like any of the um, day two or day three defensive tackles that were drafted that year panned out to be anything. All the guys that y'all liked, the Rennell Renz, the guys like Dalen Mack, you know what I'm saying? Guys like the LJ Collier. Those guys didn't turn out to be great, and y'all like them too. So I just think you just shouldn't rush year one D tackles. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're kids, and you ask them to go up against grown men immediately. So I think what's benefited Tristan Hill is he's he's got an offseason under his belt. He's gotten a little bigger, and he's going to have some, you know, offseason – weightlifting program up under his belt so he should be better but if he's not better he got a mean competition with the rookie neville galmore so um like i said whichever one of those guys end up end up winning that battle or whatever then you know fine by me cool whatever um i'm a cowboy fan you know so whoever is the better guy whoever's gonna make the more plays then just play that dude i'm not really tied into it in that kind of way but um the three the three tech position in in particular right Jared McCoy is going to be your first guy. As of now, Tristan Hill is going to be your second guy. Um, Neville Galmore is going to be your third. And then we'll just kind of do our rotations there. 
I know I was talking crazy about our uh, projected guys earlier, but boy, I'm excited about Team Toxic, man. I'm so excited about Team Toxic, bro, whether it be the weed, the arrest, punching people at the bar in Canada, threatening media people in other quarters. You know what I mean? Like, we just got some toxic pass rushes, man. And I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm going to drop that shirt at some point so we can all represent Team Toxic. Those are my guys, man. Uh, I'm really excited about them. Um, yes, we lose Robert Quinn, sure, indubitably, whatever. But I think the upside of what Randy and Alden Smith can bring to the table, I think is a little better than what you would get uh, with Quinn. I know a lot of people like Robert Quinn a bunch, but at the end of the day, he brought you like what, 10 sacks or something? And 10 sacks is cool, shots out to you. But I wish there was a stat that showed, you know, how bad you were in the run game. And Robert Quinn kind of got picked on in the run game as a point of attack player. They were smoking Robert Quinn in the run game. Uh, and a lot of people want to hate on Tyrone Crawford, but I think he was missing. And let Team Toxic come in and just get their feet up under him, man. Get their pass rush feet up under him. And then after like five or six weeks, because it ain't going to be immediately. You know what I mean? Randy ain't playing like two years or one or something like that. And Alden ain't played in 20. I think it's going to take a while for them to get their pass rush legs up under them. But what I like the most is that Randy Gregory and Alden Smith have the pass rush skill set to where they don't have to be current. They can roll out the bed rusty and be better than a pass rush on your team right now because of their natural abilities. They don't win with techniques and hand fighting and things like that. They just win roll, rolling off the bed with my arms being longer than yours or just my, my body bending a different way than yours can. You know what I mean? And just my my first step. So you just get those guys in shape and let everything else just kind of, and I mean football shape or whatever. Uh, you know, Randy and Alden have been working out, but you get them in football playing shape. I think by week seven, you're going to have a cold little combo of pass rushes. Team Toxic, greater sign, hot boys. Is wrestling sharks considered toxic or jumping off clips? Like, is that toxic behavior or is that just dangerous shit that ain't toxic all right cool we're not gonna mention bradley nine team toxic then y'all know the kind of fans that really make my ass itch a little bit you know what i mean and nothing against y'all i mean i, I appreciate y'all for watching and listening but I, I just think this is a disagreeance in player evaluation philosophy boy the fan that be trying to bust my little bubble and be like you better quit overrating these rookies they haven't even taken a snap in the league who cares it's a word called, matter of fact, everybody in the comments, in the chat box right now, put this hashtag in the comments, put this hashtag in the chat box. Hashtag projection. That's what it's called. I got a little more faith in you and my, in, in, in my players, right? It's called projection, right? If he got 2,000 all-purpose yards in college, you can project that in the league. Yeah, he'll probably get like 1,600 or so projected total you know what i mean it's a projection like I, I understand the notion of show me but you gotta like alden smith gotta show me a guy who ain't played football in seven years cd lamb played football five months ago <laughs> he was playing ball in january he was right there on tv we know what cd lamb can do it's just you gotta project to the league i said all that to say with a bad attitude hell yeah cd lamb is going to be an improvement to our receiver core. Let me tell you why. Because Randall Cobb, I think, was another player on our team that was kind of living off of old bodies, you know? We were excited because he was Randall Cobb, but if you look at what he did, he had like, what, 55 catches for 800 or so yards, right? And three touchdowns? I mean, that's cool. But is that the number that we associate with what we thought we was going to get with Randall Cobb? In our mind, we thought we're getting Randall Cobb that he was going to be like a super slot receiver option. And to be fair, he still had more receiving yards than Cole Beasley. And he missed a game. And he had a gang of drops. You know what I mean? So if you look at CeeDee Lamb, who's a younger option who can probably boogie a little bit more and don't really drop footballs, you can imagine that if you take those same targets in which Cobb had like, he had like 80 some targets, maybe like 90 or so. If you take those targets and give them to CD Lamb, I think he can do a little more for you. Plus I think he's more diverse in the things that you can do with him, you know? Like we're gonna be doing a lot of triple option looks, a lot of jet sweep things, a lot of goal line work, a lot of quick game yak stuff with CD Lamb. Of course, you know, Randall Cobb kinda had the one play, but he tried to tackle him and he stiff one. I mean, that was cute, that was cute. But CD Lamb does that for real. And the best thing about Lamb is that he ain't got to come in and be wide receiver number one. That's Coop job. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got to be wide receiver number two. That's Gallup job. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
he ain't got to be the third option because Jarwin has been in this system long enough to where he can take up the reins to be the third option. And I think Jarwin's an upgrade over Witten. I think everybody can agree that. You know, Witten caught the ball and fell down in slow motion. You know what I mean? Uh, to where I think we lose some hand security, maybe. But shit, I don't even want to say that because Witten was dropping pass at the, at the end of the year. So I don't even want to say that. But I do think that... In terms of what we get after the catch and what we get down the field, Jarwin would be better. So even if Jarwin was the third option by default because he knows the offense a little better, he's been here before. If CD Lamb is your fourth option, that's a scary fucking fourth option. We lost Travis Frederick and that make my back hurt a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're not gonna be a better offensive line. And I, you know, I just kind of don't want people to say that offensive line anymore because we're not that offensive line anymore. Them cats ain't here no more. So we got to look into a new. We we not the same offensive line. I don't want to. I don't like hearing national media pundits say that mess no more. We not them guys. We not them guys no more. Um, we got Connors. Uh, we got Tyler Badass. We got Leo Collins at right tackle, which I really like how that panned out. Um, we we just a different group, you know. But the good thing about it is that we're a different offense, you know. So once upon a time, we needed that offensive line to lean on in order to get our run game going, in order to be great there, so that everything else can just kind of trickle off of that. We needed that offensive line because Tony Back was hurting and all that kind of stuff. So we had to get run game going. We ain't got to get run game going because I still think Dak leads this offense. Dak was so good last year, people thought Zeke fell off. Right, and I was like, man, about you, you know, you know, Zeke not the leading leader in rushing anymore. Like, did he fall off? Like, nah, man, Dak just out here almost throwing for five thousand yards, bro. And still, Zeke was like sixth or whatever. And you know, there, there's no way you can hate Dak Prescott and think Jason Garrett was terrible. You know, if you hate Jason Garrett, then you know that's the reason why this offense wasn't what it was. You know, so if you take Dak Prescott, who was top tier fantastic last year right now well, number one two five in all important quarterback metrics right even deep passing if you take that deck bring him back zeke is fantastic one of the best receiving cores in the league you get a better tight end situation um long as your offensive line is serviceable man and you subtract jason garrett and include whatever the hell mike mccarthy want to do then you got a damn good recipe for top tier offensive production as long as your special teams unit ain't 32nd, and as long as your defense ain't letting Aaron Jones score four touchdowns and letting Mitch Trubisky look good and Sam Darnold look good, as long as your defense is better to any capacity, and I blame that on Chris Richard and them. If your defense improves to any capacity, your special teams improve, then there's no way that this team ain't much better than what it was. I think this team is gonna be so fantastic next year that the only thing we need to do, not even as cowboy fans, as a nation of people, stay your asses in the house so we can get football on time, man. If you stay in the house and this thing gets figured out and they get the vaccine and football can start on time, boy, we win this damn Super Bowl. We win the Super Bowl, and I ain't blink neither. And I ain't trying to hear from no pessimistic ass cowboy fan that's gonna tell me different. Cause that's what this show is for. This show is for me to express myself without having to deal with the I am legend monsters, without having to disagree with people, without having to take calls. I'm Vice Lombardi, and these are my thoughts.